Hello, everybody. Glitch Reaper here. I'm back for some more of uh, Engendered Frontier, and I was doing a little tinkering. I was thinking of upgrading my arrows a bit for my bow. So one thing you could do is you could create a ball of moss, and to obtain it, you just need to get anything mossy, about nine of it. And you can also do a few things with it. Like if you right-click on a bookshelf, you can convert it to mending moss for ten levels, and that zombie did not know what hit it. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's that time again. Fair enough, fair enough. So, so they're gonna get stronger. They're gonna level up and whack things for a while. While I demonstrate how to do this. Just like that. I have so many levels to spend, I'm not worried. <laughs> that is, that's how much experience I've got. I, admittedly, and here's, here's my interesting thought on it. You see, there's reasons why I'd prefer to keep my inventory, but... To make things have at least some penalty for dying, I think they should separate it between keep inventory and keep XP. Why is that always paired? Has nobody thought of that? Seriously. I, I have been for a long time, and this is the first time I've decided to actually speak out about it. But, it's the, it's the, uh, it's just, just a thought. Why does it always work with your XP as well, regardless? Okay, I think I see an Enderman over there. Uh, well, as long as you don't approach, you do you. Uh, because I wouldn't suggest getting close to my base because I have guards and they are pretty solid. But yeah, what I just made here is called an amelioration tomb. Uh, a, a tomb. <laughs> okay, lips, that's an interesting one. Uh, the, the amelioration tome. Now, the thing is, if I look in the actual book for Tinker's Construct, uh, Materials and You, which is now a united... Uh, a book. It's not like multiple volumes. Unless, of course, you also have uh, I, I think it's Constructs Armory, which allows you to have a special uh, thing for armor. But the thing is, it has a list of all your modifiers. Haste, Luck, Sharp, uh, Diamond, Emerald, Fortified, Silk Touch, Reinforced, Beheading, Smite, Bane of Arthropods, Fiery, Necrotic, Knockback, Soulbound, Height and Width, which is mainly for tools uh, areas, um, Blasting, Glowing, Shulking, Web, fins, embossment, and, of course, mending moss. Now, if you look at mending moss, there's nothing saying about the full-on auto-repair modifier you can get from this tome. It's not exactly, like, super secret, but it's not exactly not. Like, check this out. Like, you, you, can, you, can, hit, you can hit the use button to see this recipe that I just did, right? But... It doesn't really have any other statement. Like if I say at Tinkers, you can look through obviously a lot of these and huh? How do I actually get a said uh, said music disc? I can actually make this music disc with with Tinkers I/O. That's intriguing. I, I I'm interested because I'm a bit a fan of music discs, even though I don't show them off on camera very much. But it's just something I like. Anyhow, as I was saying, I've got it now said at Tinkers, and so it's showing everything here, right? Uh, including some things I just haven't really done yet. So let's kind of look through these, if I can get the thing to show the list in a nice way. Okay, I think that works. Uh, ish. But yeah, look for a book. See one yet? Well, obviously you're going through tool parts, so not there. Still going? Do you even see the book? See? I had it at Tinker's. And yet, it's very hard to find said book. Like, I'm making sure to withdraw a little bit each time here. But do you see that tome. Look closely. Do you see it? <laughs> yeah, it's just like one little note of it being right there. It doesn't say anything other than auto repair modifier. Like, it doesn't say, oh, by the way, you can also <laughs> use this modifier on uh, on things in the and when you actually read the book. It's only found whenever you actually go about looking for it. So it's not exactly super hidden, like it's not hidden from any eye or anything, like a few very select things are. 
but it's not something that's really advertised in the book either, so there you go. But the reason why I want this auto repair modifier is my arrows can repair themselves with the ecological trait from having wood as part of them. But I want that to happen a bit faster because I want to be able to have my arrows going up better. Now, I know I call them test arrows because I was testing them with Wyla, and I guess I'm going to keep that as part of the tradition because, l l let's face it, that, that was actually kind of a interesting idea to go along with. So, yeah. I think I got her her scythe currently again, even though it's it's not the best thing. It's not compared to the Sword of the Wyvern, which reminds me. I need to save that along with some of my other stuff in my special inventory. There we go. But anyhow, as I was going to say, I want to do a few special traits to these arrows. Now, because I have access to uh, popped chorus fruit, at least I think I have had it... Yeah. One of the traits you can do is called shulking. And that allows you to have enemies fly around. I may... Oh, wow, I haven't actually gotten a piston in here yet. That's interesting to note. So... Okay, I'm going to have to make that, because you can use a piston to give something knockback. I want to make arrows that are just about as disastrous as that cleaver I used to have. Remember that awesome cleaver uh, that I had? Uh, Chopper DX from my other series. That was a pretty cool cleaver, and I would totally design that again anytime I get the opportunity. Well, I'm going to totally do something similar. I don't have all the modifiers that I can at the time, so... Oh wait, I also need a iron ingot for this. But yeah, I don't have all the modifiers available right now, like I have like three slots, that's it. So I'd like to give it the auto repair modifier, I'd like to give it uh, the uh, knockback modifier. And you gotta admit, in the combat, uh, past the combat update, knockback is so much more useful than it used to be. Because it resets distance, so it gives you time to charge up your attacks. This is also something that works good in melee, obviously. But whenever you have any way of repetitively shooting your opponent, and just nailing them over and over and over, and, and knocking them back over and over and over, it is incredibly annoying. So, I'd like to do that against my uh, enemies, so thank you. Okay, so I have the popcorn fruit, I have that, I have that. I should be able to modify my arrows as much as I'd like. Now, the thing is, if you used Mending Moss, what would happen is it would stockpile XP and repair itself over time as if it had the Mending Enchantment. So, yep, that seems pretty good all on its own, but Auto Repair will do it regardless and it won't take your experience. So, that's where I'm kind of going there. So, tool forge time. Time to modify my arrows. Now, I want to put in this amelioration tome. Hey, it, it calls it amelioration. So, that's cool. Okay, a pop chorus fruit. Uh, kind of like that. And th that just looks weird for a moment there. Uh, never mind that. Uh, okay, and a piston, shall we? Okay, so now it's ecological, jagged, aquadynamic, darn lips. Ecological, jagged, aquadynamic, amelioration, shulking, and knockback. Uh, do I have any modifiers left? Oh, I still have one! <laughs> or is that because. Oh, it's because I can add more shulking. Okay. I'm up for that. I I'd like to max out my level of that. So, l let's do that. So, I need about. 49 of these to max it out because I think it goes up to 50 but I don't think that takes extra slots because when it when it shows uh, out of each unit that's one slot worth whenever it increases how much you can use then you know you're going into another slot so as long as it says out of 50 I'm not using up another slot but if it were to increase and say out of 100 or something then I'm using up another slot so that's when you have to kind of be careful about exactly what you're doing uh, wrong, wrong component. I need tool forge. Hey, I'm clicking on tool. F oh, okay, it was doing a weird delay. It was not my fault. Oh yeah, that's right. They did it so that you can, in fact, do. 
Like lots of, oh, oh, well, I could use more than one slot, but I, 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 I'd like to keep a slot for something else. I think I want this to also have a uh, life leech type ability. So if I go back to the nether and I whack some uh, wither skeletons. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got a, when did I get a power bow? I must have got it off a skeleton and, and didn't notice. So you, you go there because I, I can use this bow. I'm, I'm good. I mean, I could sharpen them up, make them really strong, but I'd rather have that for a new quality if I can get it. And I'd like to go back to the nether sometime. But, of course, that's not exactly what I'm after, because I'm going to be going uh, more deeply into Abyssal Craft and going into the Dreadlands. So, uh, I, I do have my y units well-fed. We're ready to go. This is a thing we're going to be able to do. But at least I was able to upgrade my arrows. Oh yeah. Hello. Let's see, maybe I can put the gate right about here. There we go. Okay. Uh, special note, everybody. If we're going in, we might be going in hot. Although, the last time we was in the Dreadlands, in my experience, a lot of them were more underground. I did occasionally see something above ground, but I think they came from underground. Weird. I mean, it really was weird. I think in this version that's... I think they can also be above ground. I'm also apparently right in the Dreadlands Forest. Hi. Um, would you like to meet my Matic? It's a good Matic. Uh, is there one of these trees small enough that I could just, like, plow through it? Or do I absolutely have to fly? Okay, there's also some demon creatures coming at me. That happens. This is the Dreadlands. We know this. Uh, I just don't know what their aggro range is. Okay, they're not directly coming at me right now. Uh, do I have my rending thing, Mabob? Yeah, I have my rending thing, Mabob. Staff of rending. So I'll be good with that. So, yeah, okay, so I can transform and be fine. As long as nothing's after me, and I don't think it is. Again, sorry, I can't transform into the Spectral Dragons. I mean, I can, but it's kind of pointless. Okay, I had enough room to fit. Okay, thank goodness. I might grab some of this wood later. I might grab it sooner. A little, uh, a little confused which way I want to go with that. Okay. So let me see if I can attack Dreadling. That qualifies. Yep, we're doing this process again. It's called Let's Rend Everything. Luckily, these aren't the ones that can shoot. There are some that do, and they, that really smarts. The uh, Dread Slugs really hurt, and they can give you Dread Plague. That reminds me, what do I need to cure Dread Plague would be a pretty good question. I mean, while I'm out and about, I might as well see if I can gather materials. I probably want to defeat them first. They have a lot of HP for the, like, the lowest uh, tier. Because the Dread Spawn are like the lowest tier of Dread creature you can find. And I want to transform out and grab their actual morphs, because the problem with being a ghast is that you're fairly large. You don't exactly fit places. Uh, what was I... Uh, well, I could just... As long as there's nothing close by, I can just use the menu. Okay. Well, assuming, of course, I get out of lag. Uh, <laughs> Okay, what do I need for a Dread Plague Cure? Uh oh. I hear that sound. Uh... Okay, they're just angry at each other. That That's... that's the... Okay, the Abyssal Knight Golems won't actually attack you because they're neutral. It's the Dread... Uh, it's, it's the Dreadium Golems that will attack you on sight, and the Abyssal Knight Golems. They really despise each other. They will attack on sight. And 
Huh. I mean, the mutated trees are something, but these mushrooms have got to be really hardy to be growing around here. Okay, there's a lot more dreaded stuff I can attack over there. But what was it? Do I have to do it from here? What was it called? Something separate? Oh! Okay. So I need to get some other things before I actually get the information. Maybe you need to get some Dreadlands wood sapling, too. Oh, and I can... Another thing is, I, is, as I go along, I will eventually start getting the units from Abyssalcraft as... Uh, as creatures for my army, so that is a thing that I'll be doing. Oh boy. They're after me. And I don't know if I can set favorites in Metamorph compared to Morph. So I just need a nice spot to go back into flight mode. Although admittedly being a blaze wouldn't be a bad idea because I'm more maneuverable. Just a little smoldery. Okay, so let me just uh, take my particles off again. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, uh, that'll be under animations. Yeah, I do have Optifine in this in this uh, instance, so that's something that I need to remember. Okay, I can attack the dreaded Abyssal Knight Golems. Because I need to rend. They don't really have as much HP as some of the other dread creatures. That's a good thing. They have a very distinctive sound when you hit them. Oh, he knows. <laughs> he's like, oh my gosh, he's after me. Come on, give me the morph. Collect. Darn lag. Entity lag does things. I'm not entirely sure what's doing that in this version, but it is a transitional, so some things will not apply afterwards. Oh my gosh, it's a bonanza. Okay, so, so far the news is, compared to 1.10.2, uh, I do in fact get creatures to happen above ground, which makes it easier to attack them for rending. On the other hand, that also makes it easier for them to attack me, especially the ones that do, in fact, have ranged attacks. The ones chucking dread slugs. Good thing about them being on pause, I can move a little bit. So I move, then I groove. Sometimes you gotta take advantage of lag. That's something I do with something, is I will take advantage of a game performing slowly. Because <laughs> it kind of helps you kind of uh, just kind of dance around a little easier. And especially anything where you need to dodge. <laughs> that, that's like a common thing to take advantage of, is just dodge. It's like, hey, look at me, I'm moving faster than you. Why? Because you lag and I'm not. That's the thing, often player position doesn't lag as much as entities do. Holy Dreadguard. I just noticed that guy hiding up there amongst the purple. Now they're something I need to be kind of cautious with because they have a partial range. Dreadguards, y you know, I wonder why how expensive it would be to get some of my own because I haven't checked all the recipes for the uh, Abyssalcraft uh, Engender crossover mobs. So I need to totally do that. Let me see if I can knock them off. Oh, it's a good thing I'm fireproof. <laughs> I'm a blaze, so I'm fireproof, so your retribution doesn't mean as much as usual. Still means something, it's just not as much as usual. I have to keep my distance because he has a mid-range attack. If he uses that breath weapon, oh my gosh. He just spews dread power on you. And it can melt through you, like, hardcore. Like, no kidding, you will die very fast. This is why they are elite. They are way stronger than a lot of creatures, including some bosses. And for that matter, they will destroy iron golems. So, uh, they are very powerful. And the fact that I can fly is like the one thing saving me right now.
Like, my life is owed to the fact that I have Metamorph. This is how dangerous this guy really is. Like, I seriously need to edge very carefully. You know, I might be able to push him into some friends so that I can finish him off a little faster. Of course, the thing is, I want to finish him off as slowly as possible, actually. Because the more you hit them with the uh, with the Staff of Rending, the more Essence you get. The more Essence you get, the better you are at preparing to upgrade your, uh, your stuff. For that matter, a few other things. So it's kind of good to just kind of peck them. And it does have a considerable range. I'm pretty sure that something that uh, Endermint of Doom and Shino had in common in programming in the first place was that they tended to use what they call an extended melee attack. So this actually counts as you punching them, basically. But with the added effect of it gaining essence. So this means that if you kill anything with it, then it will count as a player kill and give you all the experience and stuff. So this means that you can basically totally range your enemies to death with this move. And it fully counts. Of course, a lot of ranged attacks uh, account, but that's besides the point. It's just it makes this prime kind of an interesting way of finishing them off. And admittedly, it works best against single enemies like what I'm doing now. If I was against a swarm of these guys, and they were just crowding around me in a big circle, I would be having some issues. But luckily, dread guards are kind of rare to spawn on their own. Like they're, like they are not a common spawn at all. Kind of like finding an enderman. I don't know if they'd really be rare or or not. So that's a that's an interesting thought. Are they rarer than an Enderman in their spawning conditions? Of course, they're dimension specific. They're only here in the Dreadlands. So, and of course, with certain types of uh, okay, that I don't have to worry about them coming through with disruptions. But I do, uh, and I don't have abyssal blocks in this mod pack, partially because it wasn't upgraded to this version. Uh, I, I actually would have had if if it had been. I mean, I could check, but I really don't think it was ever upgraded to 1.11. And the cool thing, but the thing is that that would be the only way to find them other than actually going to the Dreadlands. So there's that, and that means they're kind of exclusive around here. And because they're also somewhat uncommon or rare, this means you really kind of got to go out of your way to fight them. On top of that. As long as I'm taking to, uh, to take them out, you got to think of one thing. There is a possibility that I will be rewarded in addition to that essence and the experience, and possibly some other things that have to do with uh, with Dredium, that I might be able to get the armor itself, which is difficult to create uh, in the other uh, using the other method, which is using a special ritual. It's good armor, and it has this quality that I'm encountering here, that. It has a retributive ability that instead of dealing direct damage to you, like a thorns-like effect, it just sets anyone who attacks it on fire. But because I'm a blaze, I really picked a good form to be while, while attacking him, because I'm fireproof. But if it weren't for that, I would gradually be burning to death, or maybe even quickly. Of course, if you're at ground level, they'll probably uh, blast you and then just destroy you even before the burning can really finish you off, so... There's more than a way they can take out, what I'm saying. And the armor is good armor, and it's part of the reason why they're so strong, is they're always equipped with a full set of dreaded Abyssal Knight armor. Like, the full set. And, and that's why you almost never see what the Dread Guard actually looks like underneath it, except maybe a hint, like through the broken helmet here. You can kind of see that he's actually a Dread creature underneath, and that his eye is just kind of staring at you. But that's just like a barely a hand of the actual creature, so you you can you can tell. Also, another reason why I'm trying to do this is if I can upgrade my tome, my fabulous Necronomicon, uh, from uh, Abyssal Wastelands to Dreadlands, then I would be able to perform a ritual to upgrade this staff so they can deal some more damage. Oh, actually, first I. Uh, upgrade to an Abyssal Wastelands version, and then I'd upgrade it to the Dreadlands version. It, it, again, Abyssalcraft has procedures for this sort of thing. Uh, lots of rituals involved, but they're good. In fact, because of the integration uh, between Abyssalcraft and Engender, some things that you'd normally use as regular crafting upgrades are actually 
it form reformed into rituals. So it kind of makes you have to use the uh, the, the uh, abyssal craft way on some things, like upgrading your various uh, well your magic sticks, your your various staves and scepters from uh, uh, from uh, engender. They need to be upgraded in with rituals as long as you have the cross mod content. If you don't, then it's basically just crafting recipes. But it shows how much the fact that they're magical means you should probably do something magical to get them empowered. So I very much agree with that. And it's what I've already done. I've already upgraded some of my stuff that way. Well, at least I'm getting revenge for all the times I was lag killed. <laughs> because now the enemy will get all that damage at once whenever that happens. So, yeah, sweet revenge. Finally. Smite the plague. I got... You see, that's what he looks like underneath that, just so you know. So now I can actually become one. Okay, dreaded chunks of abyssal knight, dread fragments. I got dreaded shards of abyssal knight. I've been getting a lot of stuff around here. It's one of the reasons why I came here. How many... See, wait a moment. All that, and I only have 62 dreadlands energy. Seriously? Like, I, I really thought it would be more than that by now. Do I have to target uh, small fries more often? Admittedly, this guy's got no armor. So he takes the damage way more often. I think they realize they're getting targeted. Yeah, let's double team them. Rock and roll. But yeah, all the dread creatures have a good amount of health. So you're going to be targeting them for a while. Well, I meant to just kind of roost a bit here. There we go. Now I can just kind of calmly sit here and attack. <laughs> no worries. Of course, with my boosted arrows, I can nail anything that doesn't let me uh, rend it. So that's a little bonus. It's for the creatures that don't count. <laughs> I have backup. Wow, that's a lot of range. I'm just pounding him across the way. <laughs> Look at how far this thing actually goes. It's, it's ridiculous. It's like anything in line of sight just works. Clunk. <laughs> All the way over there. Hey, Dreadling. Let me juggle you backwards slowly. For no reason other than to juggle you backwards slowly. Thought I saw something over this way. There you are. Let me just punch whatever's the nearest one. Wonk. After this, I've got to be having one of those essences. Is it just me, or is it just a slower gathering process on Dreadlands creatures? I may have to upgrade my staff. These guys seem to be pretty quick to dispense with this way, though. I'll just push you off a cliff. Up, oh, couldn't get the angle. Sorry, I was going to be doing it the quick way, but do I have any? Oh, actually, I have eight. I just missed them. <laughs> uh, I I must have just looked over them or something. Doesn't happen to me very often, but when it does, it does. Okay, in that case, I think I'm set to go on that one. Because, yeah, it won't take me much to get that. However, uh, do I have... My, yeah, I have my transmutation table. So I'm going to need it to get some of this stuff transmuted so that I can then acquire a nice tree. So let's... Uh, Let's throw some EMCable stuff in there. Oh, and definitely these are going to be counting as new stuff. I don't even have to debate it. I, I just... Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Using the staff to whack stuff synergizes so well with the blood extractor. 
because as I said, it counts as extended attacks. That means all the way from over here, it still counts as, as being able to give me uh, a blood to it. What's my ammo at? Okay, it's nearly topped off. So that's nice to know. So I will officially take down this tree. Where's the... okay. See, I don't think I'm gonna need any kind of... Did I get a, an actual sapling? Yes, I got a sapling. Does this give me more knowledge of the cure? Okay. Potion of Dread Plague? No. Oh man, it's 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 still not registered. I guess I need the dreaded Shogoth flesh. Because I have some of the components. I've, I've collected them before, but I'm not getting... Wait, is that in fact a sapling? That, that's a pretty good question. Is that in fact a sapling? Yep, that's a, a sapling. So I've got that component, I just need more. But while I'm here, I might as well also try to collect a little bit of wood. Because uh, Dreadlands wood is interesting. I trimmed this tree in a weird way, but I don't think it's going to be very noticeable. Especially if I just trim this last part to make it look like I meant to do that. Because I was just following the wood folks. Did it? Yeah, it block lagged me. I got... I got that uh, snapback lag. That's what's going on. Okay. How full is my Necronomicon? Oh yeah, that's right. I Okay, so it's perfect to upgrade now. Because I don't have any energy in it. I've emptied it out completely for the purpose of getting here. So that makes it perfect for me to upgrade it. Because you won't get that energy transferred over. Okay. So to actually get that upgrade, I need to... Let me see here. I need dread fragments. Uh, fragments. Okay, I'll need an entire stack worth of them. Because I remember this takes a nice set of 64, the appropriate item every time to do this upgrade. So Skin of the Dreadlands, which has a, a few more uses. I mean, I could try making crystal bags, but I haven't got to the... I am getting close to that stage of doing the crystallizer. So there is that. Hmm. Well, once I get Dreadium processed, it probably won't be too far away. Then I'll be able to have the crystallizer, so... Yeah, I'm getting close to that stage, where I have to worry about my crystal bags. So, there's that. Oh, I have my Dreadlands Necronomicon. Sweet. Uh, ooh, yeah, I needed to pick this back up. Okay, mission successful. And then some. Okay, so let's see. The rituals that I'll be needing is the Ultra Trigoris. And once I get to processing Dreadium, it won't be that far off, because I can get Dreadstone pretty easy around here. But, it, but the fact is, you kind of have to do that thing with your key, where you risk that for a little while, but... I'm pretty sure that we can take out Trigorth the Dreadbeast. I mean, I may want to have a bigger army raised against him first, obviously, or get some special units. Like, I might start making Withers, because that's how powerful he is, that I might need Hero Mode Withers to take down Trigorth the Dreadbeast. He's that insane. Uh, so, there's that, and I just, you know... Why not? Why not? Because I've already got what I need from that kind of aspect of things. Boink. Oh, he's in a, in a cave. He's got humongous levels of armor. That's not going to be very effective. <laughs> okay, uh, shoot something else. I wanted to demonstrate these arrows, and he is in perfectly the wrong spot. <laughs> Okay, so let's juggle a dreadling. Yeah, ha, ha. 
Oh my gosh, mid air, mid air, total mid air. Oh my gosh, I juggled his. So I juggled him so hard that whenever the entity lag hit, it kept his is is morph in the sky. And oh, what the? There's been Shogos around here. I need that component, but I don't know where they are. Shogos? Were you just like oozing without actually wanting to show me yourselves? Is that what's going on here? I see a trail. I need to fight a Shogoth. This is a thing I need to do in like every dimension. It's not just to collect uh, uh, an exact kind of kill. It's, it's, it's the fact that you actually need to use different uh, dimensions, uh, Shogoth flesh for various things, and this is where things get a little interesting, because I'm not sure if I see a Shogoth lair anywhere around here. So I guess we just had some wandering around while I was shooting. Or, well, I, actually, while I was rending. Yeah, it would have been while I was rending. Oh, and if you see an item dip like that, that means auto repair is taking place. Um, what is that over... Oh, that's a trio of dreadguards. Okay. That's interesting. That's a lesser dread beast. Oh my gosh. So, we got some big ones over there. If I'd rendered that, I don't know how many of those essences I would have gotten one shot. Eat the lick lips. Okay. But yeah, they're, they're pretty hefty. Okay, I'm heading back to my portal. I know it's slightly over here. Okay, where's my portal? It's in the trees, so it won't be particularly visible in the first place. It's one thing, is when you enter a new portal, you don't know where you're going to head out. You might be in a nice, easy location. You might be in a place that's terribly inconvenient. Or it could be some combination of the two. Where you're like, okay, it's good one side, but then the other side's like, okay, don't step out that way. I mean, think of all the times you've opened your, your portal into the nether, and it totally was on a cliff facing one way to certain death and the other way to okay i can go all the way to a nice uh useful nether fort <laughs> okay so i know that's happened to me at least once before i don't i don't know about everybody but it, it, it's an experience i've had <laughs> where one side was like all perfect and hey that's what i need and the other side is like oh my gosh i'm dead if i go that way uh, speaking of i'm dead if i go that way well, it's time to whip out this old, uh, old friend of ours. So let's just, let's just, uh, go for the magic here. So I need to clear him out of my area. Demon animals. He doesn't see me? No, I'm not going to debate, because I need to go home anyhow. But I did clear out the ones I knew were going to attack. Maybe the dreaded Abyss Old Knight Golem has a shorter aggro range than I first thought. Ouch. Pardon our pain? What's going on? When did I get dread plate? Oh, I'm, I'm I'm a gunner. I can't eat fast enough. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. One of those creatures got revenge. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Uh, sometimes you take them out and you totally forget they leave behind a a cloud of dread plague in their wake, and I must have just walked right into it. This is another reason why I need to process dreadium is because if I can get the dreaded, uh, the, the dark, well, it is dreaded, but if I can get the dreadium samurai set, you get a massive resistance to dread plague. Uh, it, well, you get a massive resistance to dread damage, and you have pretty much immunity to the dread plague itself. So kind of like how my Kral my played Kralium armor gives me immunity to uh, uh, Kralium plague, or kind of a way of instantly getting rid of it. Same story with the with the armor over here. So I need to work up to that. 
I'm going to try to quickly assess what were my processing steps for getting Dredium, because I'm going to see what I'm going to have to go through soon. Okay, so getting those ingots. Remember this is being a bit of a procedure. Okay. So... can cook... Well, it's not just radium dust. What are you... What are you doing? There is another way. Oh, I need to use a transmuter. Yeah, that was it. I transmuted one of those. Okay. So there's your... There's my reminder. I need to use the transmuter. Did I have the transmuter ready? Or was I just thinking... Uh, I... Okay. Okay, did I have the transmuter set up already? Nope. Okay. Next time, I'm going to be processing gradium. Okay. That's just what I'm going to be doing, because I need to get that together. And, oh, I need another... Well, I know where to go for more liquid corallium, so that's not a problem at all. So, I'll be fine. But anyhow, I guess next time, and yes, I'm temper still ablaze for now, uh, I will be processing... Cor uh, <laughs> Too used to that. I'll be processing some serious dreadium and getting uh, more into the dreadlands. Uh, eventually, I will be fighting Trigor at the Dread Beast and trying to uh, get some of the mobs from Abyssalcraft on my side as engender mobs. So that'll be cool. And by the way, no, there are no cute mob models for any of them. They're just too Lovecraft to do so. Although, hashtag cute Thulu would be interesting. Anyhow, uh, so uh, this has been Glitch Reaper. I'll be logging off for now. Hope to hear from you all later, and bye for now, everybody.